part three of our Cradle Attack series. One of my favourite submissions of 2017 and 2018, the One Arm Anaconda Squish. Hey guys, I'm here today with Reese, Coach Tom here. We're having a look at one of my favourite attacks from the cradle. Uh, I've really been into this over the last few months. I really like this choke. It has some different names and certainly if you can, if you guys watching this have seen this choke and you know a name for it, please uh, post it. You know, I've had people refer to it as like a, a Mizzou choke. I have no idea how I'm meant to spell that. Um, and uh, I've just, I think of it like a one arm anaconda choke, but with a bit of squish. So the one arm anaconda squish, that's what I like to call it, but you can call it whatever you like. The only name that I've heard two people say is, is that a Mizzou choke? I don't know how that's meant to be spelt, but if you know, feel free to leave it in the comment section. But who cares what it's called? Let's work out how to do it. So I've got Reese in my cradle. Now, you don't need to set this up from the cradle, it's just that I like the setup from the cradle, okay? You can do this from heaps of different positions. So if I'm in a cradle here, Again, if I can see my hand in the cradle, that means I can grab his arm. If I can grab his arm, he's in big trouble. However, some of my students, if they're with some of my big students, and you know, if they're 140 kilos or 300 pounds against someone who's a short guy or a small guy, sometimes it can be hard for them to reach this tricep, okay? So I'll show you a little hack how to get the tricep. Sometimes from here, you can't reach the tricep, but if I fall to my left, I can like this. Notice how I pulled his leg up. I know that seems counterintuitive because you would think, hold on, can't Reese get to the top now? And technically he can, like Reese, you can come up on top of me like this and okay, it's up, okay? But you'll notice how I had to let the grips go to do that. So when I'm here, as long as you, it seems like a high risk move, as long as you fall and grab and pull him up here, if you go to get up Reese, no. But here's the beauty of it. Look what Reese is doing. He's kicking his leg. Go for it again, like he's trying to kick and get out. So instead of holding back here, I can come on top. Because he will let you up. Your two hands are free. Uh, sorry, I should say, not free, tied up. They're tied up on him. You've got his arm, you've got his leg. But when he goes to get up, he's gonna lift you up. So it's really easy to get up. And I'm gonna put my chest right here, like this, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna make a switch. Watch, switch inside the leg. Okay, now you don't have to do that. I've just found it can really help preserve your shoulder. Okay, once I've got him here, I'm gonna push my chest through here and I'm gonna put him flat on the mat using this as my lever. Yeah. Okay, it is so tight, you have no idea. You would think this isn't tight, this isn't as good as a DAS or an anaconda. Think again, think again, and you wait till someone does this to you. So let's have a look. I'm here, now if you guys are tall, you can do it like this. Grab, switch, flatten this way. However, I find even if you can do that like you're a tall guy, the very nature of your tall limbs like mine mean there's a lot of space. So even myself as like six foot three, six foot four, I'm gonna still fall like I'm only five foot four because I feel like I get a tight choke and that's all I care about anyway. So I've got Reese like this and I'm gonna to fall to my side and grab his tricep here, okay? Now he's gonna to try to kick and get out and I'm gonna get on top and put my chest right on his deltoid. I switch and now I put him flat on the mat. And you'll see, you won't even get guys flat on the mat. They have to tap, there is so much pressure, it kind of sucks, right? But that's why it's a good choke. Sucks for him, not for me. Of course, if he did it to me, it would suck for me. But that's what makes for great techniques. This is so much pressure on this. This is a wonderful choke. And the reason I love it is because I might be trying to go for an anaconda or something like this. And you know, sometimes when you go for an anaconda, you, uh, you just kind of get it locked. So sometimes I just press and I hold. Here, with two hands, real tight. And then I'll get up, get my grip, put him on his back, flat. This is one of my favorite chokes for the last six months. I've been using it like every time I roll. I really love it and I know you're gonna love it too. Feel free to leave a name in the comment section. I'm not gonna give this some new special name. I don't believe anyone invents grappling techniques. I think we just rediscover them. And uh, if you've discovered this technique and know its name, please put it in the comment section. But whether you do or not, I don't care what it's called. You make sure you try this on the mat. You're gonna love it. I hope you enjoyed that three-part cradle series, guys. Again, I'm Coach Tom from thegrapplingacademy.com. 
I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you loved it. For more free videos, click here. And if you'd like to get our free Footlock Masterclass, please click here. And if you'd like to help support me so I can help bring you high level Jiu Jitsu for free every day, please click here. Thank you for watching guys, I'm Coach Tom, I'll see you next time.